Hello everyone, in today's video I'll show you how to create full game without a single line of code and of course using the Bolt visual scripting tool which become totally free uh, on Unity Store. This video will cover all the aspects of any game, maybe you can say a uh, space shooting game from the player movement to the game mechanics to shooting to uh, spawning enemies to scoring to doing the game over loop. So this video will be suitable for the designers who don't have uh, a good knowledge in programming. Also programmers can learn how to use this free visual scripting tool to improve their performance. Before we start, I would like to thank our supporters on Patreon who keep encouraging us to do quality videos. We really appreciate that and thank you so much. I'm Ramiz al and let's get started. Create new Unity 2D project, then go to the Asset Store and search for Bolt. Then import and uh, download and import it to your project. You'll see that you got a new folder for the installation of Bolt. Open install Bolt folder, you'll see two installation files, one for .NET 3 and one for .NET 4. So go to your project setting then to the player and check what is the API compatibility level you have. For me I found that version 4 is the available one so I installed Bolt for .NET version 4. Now you will see the Bolt setup wizard, just click next and choose programmer, programmer naming, I prefer that. And leave the other settings as the default, then click generate. And now we are ready to start developing our first game. Uh, I would like to change the camera background color to black, that makes me more comfortable. Then I created a folder to hold all the sprites I'll be using in this project. Then I went to the assets, create sprites and created a triangle to be the player we will be controlling in this game. Then drag it to the scene, move the player to the bottom of the scene, then add rigid body 2D component and uh, make the graffiti scale to zero. I'll be using the rigid body 2D to move the character or our player for this game. Then add box collider 2D. Then add flow machine component. Then create new macro, which is the core of the bolt visual scripting. So each game object now will have a flow machine and a macro, which will contains the visual scripts. Then click edit graph. Each uh, graph contains by default start and update events. We don't need start event because it's called only once when you start the game, while the update is called each frame. Then we need to move the player, so we create input get access node and we, we need to use the horizontal axis. You can check that in the project settings input manager the axis name is horizontal, we control it by using the left and right buttons or A and, and D letters on keyboard. Then right click anywhere to create a new node and search for the vector to set node. We will need only the X axis because the horizontal axis will only use the X values. The get axis gives value between minus one and one, but we need to have control over the speed of this game object. So let's create multiply node, then go to the left panel to the variables and graph variables and create new variable, name it speed and make the type float and set the value to five. Then drag it to the graph and link it to the multiply. We need to multiply the value of the, the X on the vector two with this value. I made a mistake because I created vector two set, not new vector two. So let's delete that node and create new vector2 node and connect the x of it to the multiply node. Then create rigid body 2d velocity node which will control the speed of the game object within the given direction and link the vector2 flow to that then link the value of the multiply to it also. Close the graph and let's click play and now we can move our character to the left and to the right. Now we need to make our player shoot bullets, so let's go to the assets, create sprites and create circle sprite and name it bullet. Drag the bullet to the scene, decrease its scale and change the color to orange 
add a circle collider 2d to it and add rigid body 2d to it and make sure that to set the rigid body to kinematic so it doesn't get affected by the physics also add flow machine then create a new macro let's name it bullet open the graph and we don't need the start event we just need to do translate to the bottom to create transform don't translate node and set the y value to 0.2 to make the bullet goes up let's test how things going now as you can see the bullet goes up as soon as we click play so things going fine now let's create prefabs folder and drag the bullet to that prefabs folder to make a prefab of it then we can safely delete it from the scene Let's go back to the player graph and we can group the nodes we created by holding control and dragging a box around them. Let's name it horizontal move. By the way, you can double click anywhere in the graph to make it full screen or minimize it anytime. So let's double click and make it full screen. Now we need to create another update node because the shooting will be updated each frame. Then we need the input get key node so we can shoot when we press the space bar. Then we need a branch node to detect when the space bar is pressed. Then we go to the next node which is instantiating the bullet prefab. For that we need three parameters. The prefab we created, the position of the player and the rotation. We don't need any rotation so we, set the, we get the quartillion.identity which means there is no rotation. Now drag the bullet prefab to the object instantiate node and hit play. Now we can shoot. But the problem now is that we can shoot each frame. So the player is shooting endless bullets. And also, as you can see on the right, we are not destroying the bullets after they are instantiating. That will cause performance issues. So let's deal with those two matters now. First, let's group the nodes related to shooting. Then we need to create another update node so we can do a, a cooldown mechanic. So we can't shoot unless the cooldown reaches zero after some time. So we need two new variables, one called cooldown timer, which is float and set the value to zero. And another one is the shoot cooldown also a float we can with this control the period before shooting again so let's set it to 0.5 for now the mechanic of cooldown is so simple we keep deducting from the cooldown timer variable till it, sh it reaches zero over time so we create a subtract node and over time using the time dot delta time node we subtract subtract from the cooldown timer and we clamp the value so we don't get a minus values between the zero and the cooldown timer value. Then we set back the value after clamping to that cooldown timer again. Then we compare again the value of the cooldown timer with a float zero. So let's cre create a new node float, put the value to zero and use the equal node to compare compare those values the equal node will give true if two values are the same and gives false if they are not equal and then we need to shoot only when we pressing the spacebar and we are cooled down so we create an and node to put those two conditions together we will shoot only when we are pressing the spacebar and when the cooldown is zero and finally, after shooting, we need to reset the timer. So we set the value of the cooldown timer to be equal to the shoot cooldown. Hit play and now the player can only shoot when the cooldown reaches zero. And you can see visually the cooldown values in the graph. See, it goes to 0 0.5, then it reduced to zero, then the player can shoot again. Now let's save the other issue which is destroying the bullet after they are leaving the screen. The simplest way is to go back to the graph of the bullet and create destroy node which contains two variables. The game object we want to destroy which is this game object and the time. So we set the time after two seconds 
and we need to set the game object to this bullet by creating the transform dot game object which refers to this bullet and link it to the object place on the destroy node now let's create our enemies because the game will not be fun without shooting enemies of course so let's create a new sprite this time uh, a square let's name it an enemy then drag it to the scene change the color to something like cyan and add box collider 2d to it and set it to trigger then add flow machine component and create a new macro let's name it enemy open the graph and let's delete the start event then we need only the transform.translate node to make the enemy move down by setting the y value to uh, minus 0.02 and now when we hit play the enemy moves down and that's what we want then let's drag the enemy to the prefabs folder then we can delete it from the scene and now we need two new game objects the first one is the scene controller to control what is happening in the game you can say the game manager it is so let's add uh, a flow machine component to it and it uh, create a new macro name it scene controller the scene controller will be responsible mainly, mainly for two things. First, the screen bounds to determine the width of the screen and where we should spawn the enemies. So starting from the start event, we need a vector 3, new vector 3, and we will assign to it three variables. First one is the screen width and the second one is the screen height. And for the Z, we need to know where is the camera located so we need the camera dot main node then let's expose the transform of the camera then expose its position to extract the z value of it and assign it to the new vector 3 then we need to change the coordinates from the screen to world point by creating screen to screen to world point node assigning the main camera to it and getting the vector 3 value then finally we need to assign those to the new scene variable which we created the screen bounds which is vector 2 and we need that to determine where we should spawn the enemies soon so that's it for now now let's go back to the scene create a new game object name it enemy spawner add a flow machine component to it and create a new macro let's name it enemy spawner also open the graph and let's start from the update node by uh, creating random.range node which will randomize the location of our enemy between the screen bound values so let's drag the screen bounds scene variable which we created previously and we drag it to the scene and expose its x and y values by exposing the vector 2 values we want to spawn the enemies on the x axis only and the x value represents the right side of the screen which is the max value while the minimum value represents the left side of the screen and we can access it by creating minus 1 float and multiplying it with the x value to get the minimum value now we randomize between the minimum value which is minus x and x then we create new vector 2 to get also the y, y value which is the top of the screen so we randomize the x value between minus x and x and we get the y value as it is which is the top of the screen so the enemies will spawn from the top and now we simply instantiate the enemy instance at this random location and that's it the problem now is as you can see we are instantiating endless number of enemies like what happened when we instantiated the bullets so let's solve this too we solved this previously as you remember in the bullet so we can use this chunk of code without repeating and Bolt help us creating something called super units which we can group inside it 
a group of nodes to reuse it anywhere else in other graphs. So I created new macro, I named it cooldown, then I cutted this chunk responsible for cooling down to it. We only need to add two things to it. We need to add an input node and output node. So let's add an input nesting node and let's name it input and simply just to drag the flow from it to the first uh, node which is mathfclamp. Then we need an output node. Let's name it output, but this time we should specify what type of variable we should output. And in our case, we need to output a bool. Let's name it uh, a cooldown or a cooldown bool. And that's it. Now we are ready to use this super unit to solve the endless spawned enemies issue. Go back to the player shooting mechanism and cool down and delete all the nodes responsible for cooling down and replace them with the super unit cool down and we just need to do a few adjustments to make sure that it's working. We when we created the variable the cooldown timer it was a graph variable that means only this graph will see it but since we nested the super unit is nested graphs it will not detect the graph variable so we need to convert the cooldown timer from a graph variable to a game object variable so we need to create cooldown timer inside as a uh, as a game object variable and deleted from the graph now this variable can be detected by the super unit and the final change we need to do is to change the cooldown timer nodes all the cooldown timer nodes from graph to game object and now we can simply apply the super unit the cooldown inside the enemy spawner just to drag, drag it there then add a branch node so when we cool down it turns true and only then we spawn a new enemy uh, and we just need to add a new object variable which is cooldown timer so it can be detected by the super unit set it to float and keep the value to zero and we don't need to forget to create a graph variable which is spawn cooldown so after we instantiate the enemy we reset the spawn cooldown timer using this spawn cooldown to determine the spawning period between two enemies so after each two seconds we spawn a new enemy let's hit play and test how it works oops seems it didn't work oh, so let's check what happened it's because I set the spawn cooldown not the cooldown timer variable by mistake and now if we hit play an enemy will be spawned each two seconds perfectly I'll stop here for today's video and in the next one we'll show you how to create the interaction between game objects using the on trigger events also we'll show you how to create custom event like when the enemy getting killed and how to update the score how to trigger game over and do the game or scene reload loop if you found this video useful don't forget to hit like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one next week thanks to all patreon supporters joshua kratoshville little fox black play parker nelson jackie margie R. Giacomo Marini, Falcon Jazz, Jace Lee Fever, Stablerion Canifolv, Pedro Transongs, Jens Valentine, Kojo Opuni, Rick Jawoski, Jack Crystal, Benjamin Venge, and Mohamed Aiden. Till next time, see you soon.